This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and thanks for your patience. I know some of you have been waiting a while for this one. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad P40. P is the workstation line at Lenovo. We did review the P50, the P70, the 15-inch, the 17-inch, fairly traditional workstations. This one is untraditional because it is a 14-inch two-in-one. You don't see that in workstations. You usually kind of big, very heavy, uh, you know, sometimes they're getting a little bit slimmer and lighter, but they don't do neat things like this. That's the upside of this. The, the less exciting part is that this is really the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga 460. That's the consumer version of this that we recently reviewed. And more confusingly, at Best Buy in the United States, they still call it the ThinkPad Yoga 14, which goes back, you know, a couple of generations. They're sticking with that name. That one had NVIDIA. 940M graphics, low-end dedicated consumer graphics. This one moves to workstation Quadro graphics from NVIDIA. It's the M500M, so that's at the low end of the chain, which is fair. This is a small and relatively speaking for workstation light product, so you can only fit so much dedicated graphics in it. We're going to look at it. We're going to talk about how it compares to the 460. In fact, we'll bring the 460 back in so you can see them side by side. We're going to look at it now. The things you love about a ThinkPad are here. That durability, that mil-spec 810G for dust, moisture, all that sort of thing. Magnesium and carbon fiber for the casing. It's quite rigid. I, you don't want to accidentally swing into a door jam because your door jam might lose. Port selection is good. We'll get into that later. Nothing real cutting edge and crazy here. And it's the same exact chassis as the ThinkPad Yoga 460. I'll say it and I'll say it again because it is... True, and I know some of you may be trying to decide between the two, but one thing about this is it's all higher end options. Intel Core i7, dual core 15 watt Ultrabook CPUs, not quad core, but starting with i7. You have more RAM. You can get this with up to 16 gigs of RAM, which I don't think is usually available for the Yoga 460, at least not in the United States. And you have an SSD drive in here that's fast. And 1080p is the lower resolution. It supports pen and touch. And we have the QHD, or more precisely, WQHD 2560 by 1440 resolution display, which is a very nice step up and fits the whole professional model here. So does the Quadro M500 graphics with two gigabytes of DDR5 VRAM. It's enough to give your cat a little bit of punch. It's not for super duper heavy lifting going to replace your desktop or your really large mobile workstation, but it certainly helps. So just to underscore the near identicalness of, the, well, at least the casing and the inner chassis on these, this is the ThinkPad Yoga 460 that's available in silver. A little shocking for Lenovo. We're used to that matte black, or you can get it in matte black too. And over here on the right is the ThinkPad P40. They do use the same chassis, the same keyboard, in fact, the same internal architecture. The displays are different here. There's only a 1080p option available here and on the Best Buy model, and it's an IPS display with okay, you know, eh, mediocre color gamut. Viewing angles are not as good on it compared to this one, just the angle our camera's at right now, you can probably notice, and it's not even at that much of an angle to the displays. So we do have the WQHD 2560 by 1440 display option with the P40, probably what most of you will opt for. It's a oh about $250 upgrade from the 1080p display, and it has wider color gamut too. So same casing. One thing that does get added is the fingerprint scanner on the P40, a professional kind of touch there. And taking a look on the underside, again, other than the color difference, you're looking at the same thing right down to the little Wacom pen that ships in both of these and lives in a silo. It recharges while it's in the silo. These both have Wacom AES pens with 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity. So now you see there's a lot of similarity here. Now what's the difference inside? Again, that Quadro M500M graphics. Quadro graphics are used uh, mostly for CAD professional design work, more stability in the drivers, that sort of thing. But in terms of raw performance, if you're looking at it from a consumer perspective, what it's going to do for you for games and other things like that, it's pretty similar to the NVIDIA GeForce 940M that's available in the Best Buy ThinkPad 14 version. So if you are somebody who does work in CAD and engineering work, then you probably do want the Quadro graphics. If you're a regular old consumer, you might be okay with the ThinkPad Yoga 14 or the Yoga 460. Again, pretty much the same machines with different names. 
I, but you will get a better display. So there's something your money's going for. Notice it'll be better display, at least if you go for that WQHD option on the P40. Ports are unsurprisingly the same again as the Yoga 460 that we reviewed back at the end of June. And Lenovo's not taking any chances here, shall we say, and putting anything too cutting edge. There is no USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 port here, for example. But it does have a solid array of what I would call traditional bread and butter ports that most people are going to need. You don't get Ethernet, but you can use a USB Ethernet dongle adapter on here. So this is our charging port right here. We've got the docking connector. We have a USB 3.0 port. We have the combo mic headphone jack. We have an SD card slot. On the other side, we have two more USB ports, a mini display port, and an HDMI 1.4a port, and of course the lock slot there. So that's quite a lot of ports for a 14-inch laptop, and business-minded laptops should have an array of ports so that you can do anything you need to do in the office or on the go. Since this is a two-in-one convertible that you can use in presentation, tent, tablet modes, you get the idea flat out, literally. You got volume controls on the side here as well as on the keyboard and the power buttons on the outside in case you are using it in tablet mode. This has Lenovo's lift and lock keyboard. So that means you have normal keyboard action going on right here and watch what happens as we move this. The keyboard is still enabled as long as it's flat because I figure you might be giving a presentation to somebody else where you want to control it using the trackpad and the keyboard. But as we do this with it, you can see the bezel is actually raising up around the keys so that they're flush. The keys also lock so you won't feel that wiggly jiggly. They do move a teeny teeny bit. But it's not going to be as, you know, squirrely feeling as some of the earliest consumer yogas were. Trackpad is disabled as well right there. And this is a good keyboard. I mean, Lenovo always makes good keyboards, particularly for their ThinkPad models. Lots of travel, lots of tactile feel. Nice smile-shaped ergonomic backlit keys. The track point for those of you who still like that legacy pointing device. And it actually has the three-button clicker for the track point here. For the regular trackpad section, it's going to be a buttonless. And it's a very good trackpad with the usual ThinkPad full control panel for a lot of customization. Now, there's a slight bit of trampolining here. If you press hard, there's a little bit, but that's really not a whole lot. You'd have to be a super heavy-handed typist probably to even notice that. And it's nothing that I would call really irksome. The display hinges are Nice beefy metal hinges and the casing on this, of course, is magnesium and carbon fiber, so it's a sturdy enough thing, but I'd like to see them control the bounce a little bit more. There's a lot of wiggly play going on here. Now, some of you could care less. Others of you who do things like ride on a train or a bus every day are probably going to be noticing your screen going, 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 going. And since it's glossy, the reflections are going to bounce around too, which is a little bothersome. We've reviewed several ThinkPads this year that come with the new Wacom AES Active Pen. You get this little pen inside the silo, and again, it recharges inside the laptop, so you don't have to put any batteries in here. 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity. It's very good technology. It's smooth, it's creamy, it's precise, it has palm rejection. It's good stuff. We're not going to belabor the point too much here because we've covered this in the ThinkPad X1 Yoga, the Yoga 460, you get a, quite a few of these. And for those of you who say, I can't work with a toothpick all day long, even if it's a big toothpick, you can optionally order the $40 ThinkPad pen that works with Wacom AES technology here. So you get a full-size pen with two button clickers, no eraser function on the end, sorry about that. And this uses the usual quadruple A battery that is the current state for all of these that actually have active pens that work with the digitizer. So the digitizer, the display parts, no longer holds the charges. Actually, the pen provides a minute level of charge. The display itself is lovely, and it's certainly a, a worthy upsell from the ThinkPad Yoga 460 or the ThinkPad Yoga 14 models, at least if you get this 14-inch WQHD IPS display. It's a glossy display, obviously, 2560 by 1440 resolution. It's not just that it has more pixels, because honestly, 1920 by 1080 is a perfect, perfectly reasonable resolution at 14 inches, but it has higher color gamut, too, where the Yoga had middling color gamut. This one has the what we'd expect in this price range. Full sRGB coverage, 75% of Adobe RGB, which means it's good enough for those of you who are doing professional graphics for the web. Uh, digital artwork, that sort of thing, it's going to be accurate. Gamma is perfect, too, at 2.2. 2. 
Brightness is okay. It's not stunning, but it's decent at 281 nits as measured with our Spider Pro 4 colorimeter. Black level 0.58. That's pretty good. So that works out to a contrast ratio of 500 to 1, which is decent. It's respectable. It's not as good as Surface Pro 4, for example, but it's good. And you get other things with this, like the quadro graphics and the more durable design. I wouldn't want to drop the Surface Pro 4 on the floor, but with this one, I would worry about the floor more than I'd worry about the laptop. White point is 7,100 degrees Kelvin, which is a little high. We like Perfect would be 65 to 6,600 degrees Kelvin, which we almost never see, honestly, in laptops. So if they can keep it in the low 7,000s, I'm okay with that. With color calibration, this really works out quite nicely as a color accurate and professional ready display. And that's important because the P workstation line is geared towards professionals, including those who create content. Now, as mentioned, the ThinkPad P40 has Intel dual-core 15-watt Ultrabook CPUs. There's no quad-core CPUs here, and to be honest, in the 14-inch size, that's a relative rarity, except in a couple of gaming laptops like the Razer Blade, for example, and the MSI GS40. So expect dual-core Ultrabook performance here from the CPU. That said, you can configure this pretty nicely. We have the Intel Core i7-6600U. We have 16 gigs of RAM in here. Now this has just one RAM slot, so that's the max and you can go. And Lenovo hasn't updated this yet, so it still has DDR3 RAM, not DDR4. That's not gonna make the hugest difference in the world. Where it probably would be the most obvious is when Intel HD 520 integrated graphics is active because it makes use of that memory. But you have the NVIDIA M500M dedicated graphics here anyway for your more serious graphics lifting. It has a two and a half inch SSD, seven millimeter height. So that's uh, your typical kind of slim height drive bay there. It's not using an M.2 2280 form factor SSD. So a little old fashioned again, and they're kind of, well, saving a little money here by going with that ThinkPad 14 and Yoga 460 chassis. So in terms of benchmarks, that's a SATA 3 interface there. You're not gonna get a PCIe NVMe SSD and a two and a half inch drive right now. The speeds are decent. This happens to be a Samsung brand drive. For PC Mark Home Accelerator, you can see the score there, 2910. And that's par for the course. Usually we see something around 3000, even the lower 3000s. It probably has more to do with the SSD speed or the DDR3 RAM speed. It's a perfectly respectable score though. And in 3D Mark 11, you can see that's RP score, the performance mode score 2469 and the extreme score is 757 so you're looking at a score that is at least three times faster than intel hd 520 graphics it's on par with again the nvidia geforce 940 and maybe a little bit stronger there so it's enough to give you a little extra graphics oomph to make your work in autocad a bit more tolerable this is not going to go flying at Lenovo P50 or P70 speeds in terms of crunching through really complex CAD files, but it's probably enough so that on the road, you got something to work with here. And if your work involves more of the pen drawing, that sort of thing, then you probably don't need as much heavy horsepower when you're on the road. For Cinebench R15, it scored 47.55 frames per second for the OpenGL test. Again, that's pretty respectable. It's not super duper workstation powerful, but it's way better than your average Ultrabook with integrated graphics. W Prime, it computed Pi in 15.7 seconds, which is a little better than we see. Usually we see somewhere in the 16.5 second range to compute Pi from dual core Ultrabooks. Now, if you all want to open this up to take it apart to do some upgrades, it does have that RAM slot, the 2.5 inch drive bay, for example, and the socketed Intel 8260 Wi-Fi 802.11ac card with Bluetooth, which is really currently Intel's best card. You probably don't want to do anything with that. Unscrew all the visible Phillips head screws there, and then you're not done. This, this this. You're going to pull up these little rubber guys right here. Use a fingernail if you have one. And there you go. There's three more Phillips head screws there. And these have little locator notches on them and they may not be exactly identical. So figure out which one is where. Put them down in a certain order so you keep track of it when you do that. After that, there's some plastic clips that holds it on. Nothing too serious. And you know, take out the stylus too before you go popping it off. Now, one of our screws is actually stripped on this, so I wasn't able to open it up. So we're going to show you the usual guts photos, actually, of the 
Yoga 460, which uses the same chassis and the same internals, only this one, of course, adds the dedicated graphics chip inside as well. But it'll give you an idea of the architecture. Battery is nominally sealed inside. Again, you will see that in our guts photo that you just took a look at. It's a three cell, 53 watt hour battery, the usual lithium ion polymer. Lenovo claims up to eight hours with mixed productivity use and brightness set to 40%. I average more about six hours and that's using web browser, mostly MS Edge, it gets better battery life than Chrome. Uh, MS Office, some social networking, editing a few photos in Photoshop, doing a little bit of drawing and streaming a video. So nothing too terribly heavy lifting. If you're gonna be using CAD applications are spending most of the time doing Photoshop raw file editing, then you'll probably get even shorter battery life. You will feel it get warm, but not really hot, even when then, then Quadro Graphics kicks in, because it's not the hottest card, it's not the most powerful card, and you will hear the fans, but I, they're nothing egregious, honestly, for something that does have dedicated graphics that will kick in automatically as needed. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad P40, the 14-inch mobile workstation that is more 2-in-1 convertible Ultrabook than it is workstation, actually. But still, you get to use a pen with it. You get to use it in tablet mode at 3.96 pounds, just under 2 kilograms. It's possible to actually use this in this way without straining yourself, shall we say. It's a good, literally solid machine, mil spec, all that sort of thing. Lenovo really didn't bring anything really exciting and oomphy to the table here, though we don't even have a USB-C port or Thunderbolt, things that we do see on the bigger workstations. But again, if you're okay with the lighter and quadro graphics, this does have a versatility that you're not going to find in the usual desktop replacement kind of workstation. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.